reactions to former President Trump's indictment are rolling in. GOP primary challenger and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis came to his fellow candidates' defense on Twitter, writing, quote, the weaponization of federal law enforcement represents a mortal threat to a free society. We have for years witnessed an uneven application of the law depending upon political affiliation. Senator Ron Johnson tweeted, remembering James Comey's exoneration of Hillary Clinton's classified document obstruction, saying no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. Corruptible standard? Journalist Michael Tracy pointed out, quote, everyone who is sentient from 2017 to 2021 knows if the Trump DOJ had indicted Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden for any reason at all, doesn't matter the details, it would have been wall to wall blaring that the country had disintegrated into apocalyptic fascism. The State Department inspector general, quote, credibly accused Hillary Clinton of violating the Federal Records Act and flouting State Department policies after it came out that she conducted government business exclusively over a private server she had secretly installed in her house. So interesting comparisons to be made there. Um, you, what do you make of this, Amber? I see you have something. <laughs> something cooking on my sleeve. Uh, well, look, I, I think the Biden comparison here is probably the most apt, particularly because of Biden's inability to declassify the documents that he was found to have been storing both in his mm -hmm. homes in Delaware as well as his office in Washington, D.C. at the Penn Biden Center. And the, some of these documents were from a time that he was a senator. And senators don't even have the capability to take documents out of a skiff let alone declassify them. So I just have a hard time squaring the idea that the real crime that Trump committed was not giving the documents back immediately, especially considering the FBI and the DOJ were in the process of negotiating the return of the documents and in fact had told Trump that everything was fine at Mar-a-Lago so long as they put an additional lock on the storage container where these documents were being held. Then all of a sudden they flipped a switch essentially, issued a subpoena and then conducted this raid. It seems like the prosecution aspect of this kind of came out of nowhere when the lawyers and Trump were seen to be cooperating. Yeah, it seems to me there's a lot we don't know about what that negotiation was like. Also, I have a big question mark around why was there a negotiation at all? Why wasn't it just, here are the documents, they're in this box. Of course I know where they are because it's very sensitive information, and here you go. The fact that this was a negotiation at all makes me a little concerned. We don't hear about, okay, what was the negotiation for the documents to be given back by Biden or by Pence? It was, I will comply, I know what I have generally. It wasn't, I have a treasure trove of hundreds of documents, which it seems to be the case here that the volume of documents is a distinction. And also just the fact that Trump has been resistant to cooperate. And so from what we know, there were documents moved after there was a request uh, from the archives that, hey, these are missing, we've got to get these back. Then we hear that Trump had them moved within Mar-a-Lago, which to me signals, was he trying to hide them? Was he trying to hang on to them? I'm not sure. It seems that there wasn't full cooperation here. And that to me is, I think, why we see this indictment happening. Seems to be comparing apples to apples if we were to say, well, other people had documents as well that they shouldn't have had. Seems to be apples to oranges. I really think the analogy fits that with others, it's like they took a candy bar out of the store, right? Not good, not supposed to steal. Uh, then they were like, hey, I think you accidentally like grabbed that without paying, like give it back. And they were like, okay, here you go. With Trump, it was like, he took something of high value, right? Far more documents, hundreds. It's like taking a television and then you're like, hey, don't you have a television? He kind of is like, get it if you can, you know? And then he says, well, you know, I, I should have the television anyway because it would have been just like if I had paid with a credit card. That's him saying, well, me taking them made them declassified, right? It feels like we're comparing apples to oranges by comparing this case to others. And it, it feels dangerous as well. I just have a hard time believing that Biden was cooperating when he had these documents for decades and then somehow found them in the midst of the Mar-a-Lago raid. It's a CYA effort, right? Because he knew that he had the documents, realized that the Justice Department was going after Trump for exactly the same like, thing. Oh, I got some of those and it was well. like, oh, crap, I better go grab these documents and give them back. I mean, come on, that, is that a cooperation, really? And I think the thing that I'm having trouble squaring here, too, is that the president has the authority under the Presidential Records Act to 
take whatever he wants in terms of presidential records before he leaves office. And that was apparently the process under what under which these documents were moved to Mar-a-Lago in the first place. And it's exactly the same authority that Clinton cited when he took uh, national security related audio recordings and hid them in his sock drawer. The Espionage Act was created and signed into law before the modern classification system even existed. So it's kind of stunning to me that this would even be applicable to the conversation that we're talking about here. If Trump can take the documents under the Presidential Records Act and is perfectly within his authority to do so, then why is it suddenly a crime that he doesn't give them back at the speed at which the National Archives requests them? I think the main complicating factor here, and we might see how much this is at play when it becomes public record, when we see this court case play out. But Mar-a-Lago having so many folks visit from foreign countries, maybe our adversaries, Trump having meetings with them, having the documents at Mar-a-Lago, where he's meeting with foreign adversaries, I think is a huge factor at play here for why they're deciding to indict him under the Espionage, Espionage Act versus other charges, right? I would, well, I would point out that Joe Biden had the documents in his garage that was unlocked, that Hunter Biden, who has business deals with Ukraine, apparently receiving a million dollars from a corrupt Romanian official and sitting on the board of a Chinese energy company and going in and out of that garage and is photographed, in fact, in the car next to where the documents were sitting seems like a pretty apt comparison. I think we don't know what documents are had by either of these folks. So we don't know if the documents that Biden had had nothing to do with China, had nothing to do with Ukraine. We don't know what's in those documents. With Trump, we know that there were hundreds of documents. And we also know that Jared Kushner had many dealings with foreign adversaries and conducted business abroad on many occasions. So if we want to see an indictment of Hunter Biden for that and Jared Kushner, fine. Like, yeah, for sure. But when we talk about the documents, having that many documents at a location where foreign adversaries themselves are frequenting, that I think makes this a, a bigger national security concern than if it were in, in Trump's garage at his house where we don't have foreign adversaries visiting and staying all of the time. It just seems convenient to me that the DOJ suddenly had an issue with the national security concerns of the documents when they were at Mar-a-Lago for basically a year and a half after Trump leaving office, right? And apparently they didn't even notice that they didn't have them, the National Archives that is, until um, January of this past year. So it's like, okay, if this was such a great threat, why wasn't their immediate action to make sure that these documents were returned? And why is it only happening at the same time that the Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, is indicting Trump for this, uh, this supposed falsification of business records related to Stormy Daniel? And that's what causes this perception that this is a political prosecution. I want to bring in some more details on the issue of the Espionage Act. So journalist and former rising host Ryan Grimm tweeted, quote, Good time to remind conservatives that Daniel Ellsberg has been arguing for years that the Espionage Act is, unconstitu is an unconstitutional violation of the First Amendment. If a government official mishandles classified information, they can be administratively punished, fired, etc. But it is not a crime. Meanwhile, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton trolled Donald Trump tweeting, bringing this back in light of recent news, get a limited edition, but her emails hat and support onward together, groups working to strengthen our democracy. She loves a good cash grab, doesn't she? Yeah, always, yeah. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a big Clinton fan, but um, I don't know what to make of this Ryan Grimm tweet. I mean, it's a good time to point that out. Yes, it's a good time to point out that presidents and elected officials are held to a different standard than perhaps journalists that are whistleblowers. That's a concern here, definitely. Um, and so I don't know what to make of this tweet from, from Ryan Grimm. I think it is a good time to remind conservatives of you know, Daniel Ellsberg, especially when they're making this about, oh, Trump's being treated differently under the eyes of the law. But like being administratively punished or fires, et cetera, but it not being a crime, I don't know. Our cons I think this is an easy tweet for conservatives to see and say, oh, this is a good argument for our side of things. Why is Trump being indicted now? Yeah, I mean, certainly. And, and the Espionage Act being this World War I relic um, that was basically intended to take out commies, by the way, who right. were sharing things or saying things that were against the U.S. government. It was basically used as a political tool in the first place and now being used against a former president 
to punish him for taking records that under a more modern act, the Presidential Records Act, he had the authority to take. I think Ryan Grimm makes an important point here, and I'm sure that that will definitely come up in either Trump's legal defense or in the Republican political defense of this indictment. Yeah. I mean, I think the Pentagon Papers were a great thing to make public information. I think there's a lot of stuff that's kept from the public under the guise of this is a national security concern, but really it's something that's in the public interest. If you're supposed to be serving us in government and you're making bad decisions about why we should intervene in the Vietnam War, we have no business being there, our Cold War agenda abroad was not something that the public was deeply aware of. All of the United States covert operations in other countries, all of the proxy wars we were involved in, that we we didn't find out about until years later. And I think situations where we have the Pentagon Papers, documents like this come out thanks to whistleblowers, I think those are good. Um, Donald Trump, however, having these documents, we don't know what they are. It's really hard for us as the public in the court of public opinion to evaluate justice in this case. Right? We know what the law is. We know what's technically something being declassified. We know there's a process here. We know Trump probably isn't aware of all of the details in those documents. He probably isn't even aware of what would be sensitive for certain individuals to get their hands on. And so that's why I think the declassification process makes sense, because he can talk to experts who can speak to those things before he decides to declassify them. I think the main concern for me is who had access to these documents other than Donald Trump. If it's just Donald Trump looking at them, he saw them before, he's seeing them again now. I mean, that's not a big deal for me. Yeah. It's just the sharing thing. It's actually weird that we haven't had more leaks about what the documents specifically were, because I feel like if they were really sensitive national security related things, you kind of have this catch-22 where it's like, can the media report on it? But why aren't they if it's so bad, you know, giving us a hint of what it actually is? Because, like, obviously the media, the mainstream media would want to leak details that would make Trump look bad and make this indictment look just. But... Based on what we do know, a large chunk of these documents were related to the Crossfire Hurricane probe, and Trump was supposedly hanging on to them in the event that the Durham report dragged out longer or wasn't completed in time for his re-election run, and he said that he wanted to uh, declassify these and release these to the general public so that they could see the errors that the FBI made in its investigation. And the Durham report did confirm that the FBI had little to no evidence on which to actually prompt Crossfire Hurricane, which was, of course, the investigation that accused Trump of, uh, of colluding with the Russian government in order to get elected in 2016. So if it's the case that the ma vast majority of these hundreds of documents were related to that investigation, then I don't have a problem with him having those or releasing those at all. Yeah, that would be fascinating if we had documents released ahead of this trial. That would be a, an interesting turn of events. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> and we'll report on it here on Rising, but we've got more Rising after this.